Hello and welcome to this webinar on East Sussex County Council's proposed bus service improvement plan, bus priority measures. We want your input on the proposals during this formative stage to ensure that the proposals deliver the best possible outcomes for local residents. The proposals are currently at feasibility stage of design and as we progress through the project phases, including the detailed design stage, we will take into account consultation feedback to help shape the subsequent stages of design. In this webinar, we will explain what a bus service improvement plan is, what the objectives of the proposed bus priority measures are, where we intend to deliver schemes, what these schemes will involve, and finally, what the next steps in the delivery of these proposals will be. Bus service improvement plans, also known as BSIPs, are a key part of the government's national bus strategy. This strategy looks to improve England's bus services through providing greater local leadership, ultimately encouraging a higher number of passengers to use buses. Three billion of government funding has been committed to ensure that bus services are available to everyone, everywhere. Bus service improvement plans set out how local transport authorities intend to work with bus operators and communities to ensure that services meet the needs of residents. Our BSIP was awarded 41.4 million of central government funding for a range of schemes that promote bus priority in East Sussex. The BSIP has five key aims. The first is to improve bus reliability by introducing a series of bus priority measures linking dedicated bus lanes and traffic signals. These measures will reduce delays, speed up journey times and make sure that buses arrive on time. This, in turn, will help us achieve greater modal shift, by which we mean a greater number of people using buses relative to private cars. This will lead to reduced congestion on the road network. The knock-on effects of this will include better air quality and safer, more pleasant places to live, work and do business. The public consultation is open from the 31st of July 2023 and will close on the 25th of September, with the public having until 11.59pm on the 25th to respond to the survey. We want your views on the proposed schemes as part of the BSIP bus priority measures. Your views are important to us and this public consultation is an opportunity to provide feedback and comments on the latest plans which will then be taken into consideration as the proposals move to the next design stage. We are also hosting a series of in-person drop-in events during the consultation period. During the events, members of the project team will be available to answer your questions and provide you with more information about the proposed schemes. We have set five main scheme specific objectives for the bus priority measures that form part of the BSIP. The first is to improve bus reliability. By introducing bus priority measures like designated bus lanes and signals, bus journey times will be lowered and buses are more likely to arrive on time. By making the bus offer more attractive, the scheme will encourage greater bus use. This is our second objective. If fewer people use their cars to make routine trips, and instead use buses, it will help us to realise our next objective, to reduce congestion and improve traffic flow. This means that everyone spends less time stuck in traffic and more time where they need to be. It will also help make journeys quicker and more reliable and will reduce vehicle emissions and improve local air quality. Ultimately, we want the schemes to feed into wider initiatives such as the government's legally binding commitment to reach net zero by 2050. That's our fourth objective, to complement wider initiatives. Finally, we want our schemes to support safer journey options. By having a number of dedicated spaces for active travel, we can reduce the conflict between different road users and support safer, more attractive journeys by walking and cycling. This ultimately contributes to making happier, healthier and more active communities. We have two packages of schemes. The first covers the Eastbourne area, whilst the second is across New Haven and Peace Haven. On the following slides, we will provide more detail about the exact locations of the proposed interventions. 
We are proposing four schemes in Eastbourne. These cover King's Drive, Upperton, the Seaside Corridor and Seaside Roundabout, the Eastbourne Station area and Sovereign Harbour. The key benefits of these schemes include faster journeys, increased bus usage, safer travel for all road users, better visibility, better access to the train station and improved provision for cyclists. The scheme on King's Drive will involve a bus priority measure through a dedicated bus lane between Darcy Drive and Rodnell Roundabout, which will serve Eastbourne District General Hospital and the East Sussex College Eastbourne Campus. This will make bus services on this key corridor more reliable and increase their speed. The hospital road junction will be enhanced to support bus prioritisation. We will also improve bus service infrastructure along the route such as bus shelters, to make a more attractive option for people travelling to these destinations. We will provide dedicated bus lanes in both directions along Seaside Road and St Anthony's Avenue, from east of Gilbert Road to Langley Rise Roundabout. Traffic signal upgrades will also be made at these junctions to prioritise buses and reduce delay. Again, this intervention will improve bus journey times without having a negative impact on cars. Cycle improvements will also be made along Seaside Road and St Anthony's Avenue, which will connect with existing cycle routes to make journeys by bike within the area easier. New and upgraded pedestrian crossings, including a Toucan crossing at the Seaside Roundabout, will be provided, which will link with two existing sections of shared footway and cycleway along Lockbridge Drove. We are proposing a new zebra crossing between Leslie Street and Hanover Road. This will contain a central island and replace the existing uncontrolled crossing opposite Leslie Street. The existing on-street parking in the westbound direction will be retained, although there might have to be a slight reduction in the number of spaces. A section of northbound bus lane will be introduced between Leslie Street and Whitley Road. At the seaside, Beamsley Road, Whitley Road Junction, bus priority signals will be introduced. We will also remove the left turn movement from Seaside Road onto Beamsley Road. On the southbound approach to the junction, we also intend to upgrade the existing crossing facility by providing a Toucan crossing. There will be no changes to the remaining arms of the junction. The bus stop currently at Carlton Road will be relocated south to opposite the recreation ground. The bus stop at Beach Road would be relocated slightly further north, opposite Woodgate Road. We will upgrade the existing pedestrian crossing between Ashton Road and Beach Road. A southbound bus lane will be introduced beginning at Seaford Road and continuing to Beamsley Road, as shown on the previous slide. The existing pedestrian crossing between Romney Street and Channel View Road will be upgraded. A northbound bus lane will be added between Windermere Crescent and Fort Road. This will be aided by the removal of the existing right turn lane at the Churchill Road Junction. The existing bus stop near Winchelsea Road will be removed to make space for a new pedestrian crossing between Rye Street and Winchelsea Road. This new pedestrian crossing will be added to improve access to the bus stop. The existing crossing opposite St Andrew's Church will be removed. Cyclists would be able to travel in the bus lane between Finmere Road and Queen's Crescent. At the seaside junction with Lockbridge Drove, the existing crossing on the roundabout will be upgraded to a Toucan crossing. New Toucan crossings will be added on the other three arms of the roundabout. A number of improvements will be made on this section of Lockbridge Drove. The retail park access junction will be upgraded by the addition of traffic lights reducing traffic build-up at the seaside roundabout. New shared use pedestrian and cycle paths will be provided on all approaches to the roundabout. Opportunities for greenery and landscaping around the junction will also be explored. The right turn pocket at the Myrtle Road Northbourne Road Junction will be removed to make space for the northbound bus lane. The introduction of a southbound bus lane between Langley Roundabout and Lockbridge Drove Roundabout would require the removal of some right turn pockets 
and also some existing pedestrian islands. The existing uncontrolled crossing opposite the Lidl would be upgraded with traffic lights, while the uncontrolled crossing at Queen's Crescent would be removed to make space for the southbound bus lane. Just north of St Anthony's Mews, the uncontrolled crossing will be upgraded with traffic lights. A bus lane would continue northbound through the Langley roundabout with a new bus stop and waiting area provided. The shared use pedestrian cycle path would continue north beyond the Langley roundabout. The existing pedestrian crossings would be retained on all arms of the Langley roundabout. Southbound, a bus lane will be introduced on seaside from Langley roundabout and continuing to the Lockbridge Drove roundabout. In addition to this, Package 1 includes improvements within the Eastbourne Station area. Along Upperton Road and Station Parade, we intend to deliver dedicated bus lanes and a shared use cycle path. At the Upperton Road Station Parade, the Avenue, Junction, improvements will be made. These will give buses priority through the junction by adjusting the signal programming. The crossing facilities for pedestrians will also be enhanced. Finally, the existing Station Parade Southfields Road roundabout will be replaced for the traffic signal junction with pedestrian crossing facilities. This will make the environment for pedestrians safer than the existing setup. Along Sovereign Harbour, we will look to introduce a new single lane dedicated bus corridor between Atlantic Drive and Harbour Quay. This will have replaced the existing cycleway. To ensure that there is still pedestrian and cyclist provision, we will build a new shared use pedestrian and cycle route alongside. To allow this, the existing service road at Harbour Retail Park will be realigned and widened, although it should be noted that this is subject to discussions with the landowner. Junction upgrades will be provided at both Atlantic Drive and Harbour Quay. Since the bi-directional bus route will only have one lane, Entry will be controlled by signals from the Atlantic Drive and Harbour Quay junctions to regulate bus movement. Around Harbour Quay, two new bus stops will be introduced. A signal controlled pedestrian and cyclist crossing facility will also be provided at the Harbour Quay end of the bus lane. Lastly, urban rail improvements will be made. This will include more planting, some sheltered seating areas and cycle parking. Our second package of schemes is focused on New Haven and Peace Haven. The first scheme will take place around New Haven Town Centre Ring Road, and the second scheme will cover the Drove Road, New Haven Town Centre area and Denton Road roundabout area, while the final scheme will focus on the Peace Haven A259 corridor. The schemes will bring the host of benefits, which includes speeding up journey times, improving facilities for cyclists, and improving the comfort and safety for all users. In New Haven Town Centre, along the Ring Road, we want to introduce virtual bus priority measures. This means that we will optimise signal timings and coordinate the signals to ensure that buses have priority around the Ring Road and can pass through faster. As part of junction signalisation, we will also ensure that pedestrian crossing is prioritised, making the road safer and easier to cross for pedestrians. We are proposing to replace the existing mini roundabout at the A26 Drove Road Junction with a traffic signal control junction, offering better opportunities for cyclists and pedestrians to navigate the junction, as well as improving traffic flow. We want to reallocate existing road space to include an eastbound bus lane between this junction and the A259 Drove roundabout. Westbound traffic would continue to use the westbound lane of Drove Road, but access into and out of existing retail areas along this section would be restricted to left in, left out movements only. To accommodate this, the existing crossing island at the Drove roundabout would be relocated 10 metres west. A bus lane would also be introduced on the A259 westbound approach to the Denton roundabout. The bus lane would continue west onto Drove Road, where a bus gate would be provided onto the Drove roundabout, providing bus priority. 
We intend to put in new shared use pedestrian and cycle paths with new and upgraded pedestrian and cycle crossings. Between the McKinley Way and A26 New Road Junction, we will widen the southern footpath along Drove Road. To the east, before Denton Roundabout, new crossing facilities will be added. A number of new bus shelters will be added across the bus route. To summarise, we will replace the existing mini roundabout at the A26 New Road Drove Road Junction with a signalised junction. We will introduce new bus lanes, relocate and improve bus infrastructure and improve facilities for pedestrians and cyclists. In Peacehaven, dedicated bus lanes will be provided in both directions of the A259 South Coast Road. This will complement existing bus lanes along the A259 between Peacehaven, Talscombe Cliffs and Brighton. We will also implement junction upgrades. We will signalise the A259 Sutton Avenue Junction, which will also benefit from dedicated crossing facilities for pedestrians. Next, we will signalise the A259 Sussex Way Junction. And finally, signal upgrades at the A259 South Coast Road, Talscombe Cliffs Way Junction will enable bus priority. Pedestrians and cyclists will be further benefited by dedicated measures. A new shared use pedestrian and cycle path is proposed through the Dell Park. Pedestrian crossings will also be added and improved along the route. The existing carriageway will be widened west of Highview Road to make space for a new eastbound bus lane. Highview Junction will be narrowed, which will help improve safety and make room for a new footway and greenery alongside. Bus lanes will be provided between Highview Road and Talscombe Cliffs Way. This would require the removal of the existing layby opposite Broomfield Avenue, with a new bus stop being provided in the same location within the bus lane. Pedestrians would benefit from new footway on the approach to the Talscombe Cliffs Way roundabout. This would require some private land, which is subject to discussions with landowners. The signalised junction with Talscombe Cliffs Way will be upgraded to provide bus priority. This would have no effect on the existing pedestrian crossings, but the existing right turn pockets at the junction would be removed in order to allow the two way bus lanes to be provided through the junction. The existing bus stop and pedestrian crossing east of Broomfield Avenue, the on-street parking between Sussex Way and Central Avenue, and the pedestrian crossing east of the Central Avenue would all be retained. Two-way bus lanes would be provided through the Sutton Avenue junction. This will require the removal of existing right turn pockets, but will mean that buses have priority through the junction. A new shared use pedestrian and cycle path will be added through the Dell Park and there would be the potential for re-landscaping on the frontage south of the Sutton Avenue Junction. Lastly, the existing pedestrian crossing outside Camden's Pharmacy would be upgraded. So what happens next? As mentioned, we are holding a series of in-person events where you can meet the team and discuss the proposals in further detail. As part of the consultation, we are asking that you provide your feedback on the proposals so that we can take into account any comments in later parts of the design. After we analyse all the feedback, we will produce a summary of the consultation comments to be considered during the preliminary and detailed design stages, which are due to start in December. There are a number of ways in which you can give your feedback. You can scan the QR code to follow a link or you can pick up a paper copy of the survey with a brochure at a consultation event and then return it in a prepaid envelope. If you need a paper copy of the survey but can't make any of the consultation events, please email or call the team using the details on the slide. The public consultation period will close on September 25th, so please give your comments before then so that they can be taken into account. The in-person events are your chance to meet the team and have any questions about the proposals answered. The first will be at Eastbourne Town Hall on the 30th of August from 2pm to 6pm. 
On the 7th of September, you'll be at Talscombe Civic Centre from 10am to 1pm and the Community House in Peacehaven from 2pm to 5pm. On the 14th of September, we'll be at New Haven Outdoor Market from 11am to 2pm and the Hillcrest Community Centre in New Haven from 3.30pm to 7pm. Lastly, on the 16th of September, we will be at the Foundry inside the Beacon Shopping Centre from 9.30am to 1.30pm. Thank you for listening and we look forward to meeting you at one of the events soon.